Welcome to Amazing Life One Channel Guides Today you watching Jennifer Connelly American Actress Lifestyle Biography and Beautiful Photos I hope you enjoy this video like share subscribe channel thank you for watching video you have any question please comment. Biography Jennifer Lynn Connelly born December 12, 1970 is an American actress. She began her career as a child model before making her acting debut in the 1984 crime film Once Upon a Time in America. After having worked as a model for several years, she began to concentrate on acting, starring in a variety of films including the horror film Phenomena 1985, the musical fantasy film Labyrinth 1986, the romantic comedy Career Opportunities 1991, and the period superhero film The Rocketeer 1991. She received praise for her performance in the science fiction film Dark City 1998, in playing a drug addict in Darren Aronofsky's drama film Requiem for a Dream 2000. Jennifer Connolly Connolly at the 2010 Toronto International Film Festival born Jennifer Lynn Connolly December 12, 1970, age 51 Cairo. New York, U.S. Education Yale University Stanford University Occupation Actress Ears Active 1982 Preset Spouse Paul Bettany M. 2003 Children 3 In 2002, Connolly won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her portrayal of Alicia Nash in Ron Howitt's biopic A Beautiful Mind 2001. Her subsequent films include the superhero film Hulk 2003, the horror film Dark Water 2005, the psychological drama Little Children 2006, the drama film Blood Diamond 2006, the science fiction film The Day the Earth Stood Still 2008, the romantic comedy He's Just Not That Into You 2009, and the biopic Creation 2009. In the subsequent decades, she took on supporting roles in Aronofsky's biblical epic film Noah 2014, and in the action films Alita, Battle Angel 2019, and Top Gun, Maverick 2022. Since 2020, she has starred in the TNT dystopian television series Snowpiercer. Connolly was named Amnesty International Ambassador for Human Rights Education in 2005. She has been the face of Balenciaga and Louis Vuitton fashion advertisements, as well as for Revlon Cosmetics. In 2012, she was named the first global face of the Shiseido Company. Magazines, including Time, Vanity Fair, and Esquire, as well as the Los Angeles Times newspaper, have included her on their lists of the world's most beautiful women. Early life Connolly was born in Cairo, New York, in the Catskill Mountains. She is the daughter of Illy, an antique dealer, and Gerard Carl Connolly, a clothing manufacturer. 3. 4. Her father was a Catholic of Irish descent. 5. Connolly's mother was Jewish. 6. 7. And was educated at a yeshiva. 8. 9. All of Connolly's maternal great-grandparents were Jewish immigrants from Poland and Russia. 10. 11. Connolly was raised primarily in Brooklyn Heights, near the Brooklyn Bridge, where she attended St. Anne's, a private school specializing in the arts. 11. Her father suffered from asthma, so the family moved to Woodstock, New York, in 1976 to escape the city smog. 3. Four years later, the family returned to Brooklyn Heights, and Connolly returned to St. Anne's School. 1. After graduating from high school, Connolly studied English literature at Yale University in 1988. Connolly has described herself as a conscientious student who wasn't really concerned with having a social life or sleeping or eating much. I was really nerdy and pretty much stayed in the law school library, which is open 24 hours, most of the time I wasn't in class, 12. After two years at Yale, Connolly transferred to Stanford University to study drama. There, she trained with Roy London, Howard Fine, and Harold Guskin, 13. Encouraged by her parents to continue with her film career, 4. Connolly left college and returned to the movie industry the same year. 14. Personal life Connolly and her husband Paul Bettany at the 2009 Toronto International Film Festival while filming The Rocketeer, Connolly began a romance with her co-star Billy Campbell. They became engaged 25 but broke up in 1996 after five years together. 126. Connolly then had a relationship with photographer David Duggan, with whom she has a son, born 1997, 127, 128, on January 1, 2003, in a private family ceremony in Scotland, she married actor Paul Bettany, whom she had met while working on A Beautiful Mind, 129. They have two children, a son, born 2003, and a daughter, born 2011, 
130, 131. After having lived together in Tribeca, she and Bettany moved to Brooklyn Heights. 132 Charity work on November 14, 2005, Connolly was named Amnesty International Ambassador for Human Rights Education. 133. She appeared in an advertisement highlighting the global need for clean water, and sought donations for African, Indian, and Central American drilling projects for the nonprofit organization Charity, Water, 134. On May 2, 2009, she participated in Revlon's annual 5K run, Walk for Women, 135. In May 2012, Connolly was named Ambassador for Save the Children Fund, to advocate for children's rights in the United States and worldwide. 136 Career 1980-1985 Modeling and early roles modeling for magazines when Connolly was 10 years old, an advertising executive friend of her father suggested she audition as a model. 15. Her parents sent a picture of her to the Ford Modeling Agency, which shortly after added her to its roster. Connolly began modeling for print advertisements before moving on to television commercials. Fort 16. In an interview with The Guardian, she revealed that, after having done some modeling, she had no aspirations to become an actress. 17. She appeared on the covers of several issues of the American Teenage Magazine 17 in 1986 and 1988, 18th, 19, 20, 21. In December 1986, she recorded two pop songs for the Japanese market, Monologue of Love, and Message of Love, 22. She sang in phonetic Japanese as she did not speak the language. 16. Early roles when her mother began taking her to acting auditions, the then 12-year-old Connolly was quickly selected for a supporting role as the aspiring dancer and actress Deborah Jelly in Sergio Leone's Jewish gangster epic Once Upon a Time in America, filmed 1982-83, released 1984-11-16. The role required her to perform a ballet routine. During the audition, Connolly, who had no ballet training, tried to imitate a ballerina. Her performance, and the similarity of her nose to Elizabeth McGovern's, who played the character as an adult, convinced the director to cast her. 23-24. Connolly described the movie as, an incredibly idyllic introduction to movie making. 25 Connolly's first leading role was in Italian giallo director Dario Argento's 1985 film Phenomena. In the film, she plays a girl who psychically communicates with insects to pursue the killer of students of the Swiss school where she has enrolled. 26. Connolly next had the lead in the coming-of-age movie Seven Minutes in Heaven, released the same year, 27. In a retrospective interview, Connolly said, Before I knew it, acting became what I did. It was a very peculiar way to grow up, combined with my personality, 17. She described feeling like, a kind of walking puppet, through her adolescence, without having time alone to deal with the attention her career was generating. 17, 1986, 1999. Mainstream films Connolly gained public recognition with Jim Henson's 1986 fantasy Labyrinth with David Bowie, in which she played Sarah Williams, a teenager on a quest to rescue her brother Toby from the world of goblins. Although a disappointment at the box office, 28. The film later became a cult classic, 29. The New York Times, while noting the importance of her part, panned her portrayal. Jennifer Connolly as Sarah is unfortunately disappointing. Dot dot dot. She looks right, but she lacks conviction and seems to be reading rehearsed lines that are recited without belief in her goal or real need to accomplish it. 30. In 1988, she began work as a ballet student in the Italian film Etoile which was released in 1989, 31, and portrayed college student Gabby and Michael Hoffman's Some Girls. 32, in 1990, Dennis Hopper directed The Hot Spot, in which Connolly played Gloria Harper, a woman being blackmailed. 33. The film was a box office failure but Connolly was praised. 15. Stephen Schaefer wrote for USA Today, anyone looking for proof that little girls do grow up fast in the movies should take a gander at curvaceous Jennifer Connolly in The Hot Spot. Not yet 20, Connolly has neatly managed the transition from child actress to ingenue. During an interview with Schaefer, Connolly commented on her first nude scene, the nudity was hard for me and something I thought about. Duh, but it's not in a sleazy context, 15. In the same year, director Gary Marshall considered her for the role of Vivian Ward in Pretty Woman, but ultimately felt that she was too young for the part. 
34 Connolly's next film was the 1991 romantic comedy Career Opportunities, starring alongside Frank Whaley, 35. People magazine criticized the film for exploiting Connolly's body. The marketing included a life-size cardboard cutout showing Whaley watching Connolly ride a mechanical horse, with the caption, he's about to have the ride of his life, 16. In an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, Connolly said that a Yale professor brought it to her attention and, that wasn't something I felt all that comfortable about, 25. The big-budget Disney film The Rocketeer, 1991, followed later that year, but failed to ignite her career, 36. She played Jenny Blake, a Disney dilution of what was in the original work of Betty Page persona, here the aspiring actress girlfriend of stunt pilot Cliff, The Rocketeer, 37. New York Magazine characterized the movie as, pallid, instead of her performance, Connolly is properly cast, she has the moist, full-to-the-cheek bone sensuality of the Hollywood starlets of that period, but she's a little straight, 38. She appeared alongside Jason Priestley in the Roy Orbison music video for, I Drove All Night, the following year, directed by Peter Kerr. 3940 Connolly next appeared in Of Love and Shadows, a 1994 Argentine-American drama film written and directed by Betty Kaplan starring Antonio Banderas. In 1995, director John Singleton cast Connolly as a lesbian college student in higher learning, 41. She then appeared in the 1996 independent film Far Harbor as Ellie, a prominent person in a Hollywood studio who writes a screenplay based on her traumas. 42. In 1996, Connolly followed up with the neo-noir crime thriller Mulholland Falls, which featured the murder of Alison Pond Connolly, mistress of General Tim's John Malkovich, and the investigation by a group of detectives led by Maxwell Hoover, Nick Nolte, 43. New York Magazine wrote about a scene that reveals the link between Tim's and Pond, this footage is actually dirty. That is, it makes us feel like voyeurs when looking at it, but it's so juicily erotic that we can hardly look away, 44. Regarding the nude scenes in the film, Connolly said, It kind of shocked everyone who knows me that I wound up doing this movie, because I had always been so careful about nudity, it was very much a part of this character and I couldn't be coy or guarded or self-conscious, otherwise it wouldn't work. It was sort of a challenge I wanted to take on, I guess, 15. Mulholland Falls was a box office failure. 45. She began to appear in small budget films which garnered praise from critics, such as 1997's drama Inventing the Abbots, set in the late 1950s, in which she played. The part of Eleanor, one of three daughters of the town millionaire, Lloyd Abbott, 46. The critic from Entertainment Weekly thought Connolly gave a strong performance, writing she, raises the stakes any time she's on screen, 47. Co-producer Ron Howard, who would later direct Connolly in A Beautiful Mind, said, she not only was beautiful and seductive but gave some difficult psychological moments in the film a lot of depth and complexity. She had an extraordinary combination of talent and beauty, and I guess I stored that information in the back of my brain, 